weekend of the year. And with that in mind, we have a very special guest joining us in studio right now. NASCAR Xfinity Series driver Daniel Hemrick is here. Richard Childress Racing. Good to see you, young man. Uh, and great run, by the way, on Friday evening over in Kentucky. Yeah, I appreciate it. Good morning to you guys. Thanks for having me. It's uh, Yeah, we're coming off some good finishes. and. Good to keep the momentum going with some good things here in Iowa. Yeah, so uh, Xfinity Series racing uh, some of the best in the entire world, and uh, you're right smack dab in the middle of it. And last year uh, didn't do too bad. Your rookie season in the Xfinity Series, a top five, you kind of like that. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, we had a chance at a championship, and your rookie year of anything, that's about all you can ask for. And we've been able to take that momentum last year and lead into this year and have a shot every weekend we unload with our Southland Hotel Casino Chevrolet. And, Look forward to doing that again on July 28th here at Iowa again. Yeah, you see that, and you see the South Point on there, uh, Jack. I see South Point quite a bit. Okay, South Point outfit, quite yeah. a bit, and uh, you know, <laughs> Brennan Gone was uh, the previous pilot of that, who we've had a chance to yep. visit with on several yep. occasions. How was it driving for a company like that? Oh, it's it's incredible. Uh, the Gone family—they've been integrated in, in all forms of motorsports for so many years, and to be able to see Brendan, get to know Brendan on the level I did as a teammate last year, and now be able to integrate that into uh, us having the business relationship. It's been fun and uh, just a lot, just really enjoyable to work with those guys. We've recently. had a chance to interact with them a couple of times, but uh, just honestly, is he as crazy as he really seems? Everything you see is what you get. Okay. And then some. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, we're talking about a great event coming up next weekend. Why are you in town today? I I'm in town today doing some really cool stuff locally with uh, an organization, Mills from the Heartland. Mm -hmm. we're going, I think we're going to bag roughly 25,000 meals for families and kids in need around here. So that's really cool to be a part of and also talking about the race July 28th at Iowa. So uh, we were just here and so with everything that's going on today, hopefully we can help take some of that and get some of those folks out to the racetrack as well. Now you were posting that you were really looking forward to this event happening a little later on this morning. Why is that the case? Uh, you know, it's it's such a, I guess, fast paced sport that we all live in. So very rarely do you get a chance to really give back and do things for other people. So anytime we get an opportunity to do it, we love to. And um, to be able to do it and, and really promote a short track racing event that I'm very dear to me. That's something I grew up doing. So be able to help the community and tie in racing all at the same time is really special. Now, when you're back in North Carolina, obviously the Xfinity Series is your focus. But what was your, your roots? How did you get to where you are right now? It was all short track racing. Uh, was it know, on dirt or was it on pavement? It, it was a little bit of both, uh, mostly pavement. But I, the cool thing for me was always I was always building my own race cars, driving them to the racetrack, working on them, making the changes, and then getting back in them and racing them and going back and doing it again every week. So it gave me a, a huge respect for what it takes to not only be successful in the sport, but what it takes to even get to the racetrack every week. And I, I like to think that's what keeps me going and allows me to take care of my stuff every week. And I feel like that's why I've had a shot to be at the level I'm at now. There you go. And uh, and also being part of the uh, Richard Childress organization, that has to be special as well. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Richard Childress's name is such an icon in our sport. and. Uh, my favorite guy growing up was Dale Earnhardt. So to okay. have Richard as his owner and now be my owner is a pretty surreal deal. So it's definitely incredible to call him a boss. Okay. Let's talk about racing here in Iowa. What gets you excited about coming out to the Iowa Speedway? Iowa is a place that all the racers love going to. It's a racer's racetrack. Uh, there's no dominant groove. You can run all the way from the outside wall to the, to the apron and still make speed and be fast either way you want to look at it. So it allows racers to navigate and have options. Uh, and that's all we look for. We love to have options. That means we can put on a better show for the fans. And um, there's not as many of those racetracks around anymore. So we really circle Iowa when we come here. And we look forward to putting on a good show again. Now when we see some of these, uh, the, obviously your ultimate goal would be the, the cup level, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. That's what we all start out in this deal doing. But um, I've been fortunate to reach the point I'm at in my career and hopefully just be successful wherever that ends up. Right. And we do know that some of the the guys in the Cup Series right now, they're finding some success by stepping back and going back and racing some of these short tracks. Uh, have you had an opportunity to do that or not? I have. I haven't got to do it since we started the season in February, but I, got, I get to do some of that in the off season. Uh, Richard, he likes me to stay all in and focused on, right. on the task at hand in the Xfinity Series. Uh, but I go back and support all local short tracks. Um, still actually help with some guys short track racing with cars and setups and notes and all the stuff it takes to be successful or try to be successful um, but it's, it's definitely what keeps our sport going and uh, I always enjoy going back and supporting those guys. Yeah, I, I want to give people some ideas about uh, how big of an organization uh, Richard Childress Racing is because this is not a, like a little back behind your house garage. <laughs> not at all. This is, explain how big this organization really it, is. It truly it actually caught me off guard even how big I thought it was versus how big it actually is. Uh, we're roughly 430 plus employees. Uh, we have our entire engine facility in ECR is on property. We built all of our own chassis. There's, you see a guy walking around, he is especially in some form or fashion in whatever it is that he does. 
Um, and it takes every one of those guys and then some putting in 10, 12 hour days, uh, 365 days a year to make the organization go around. So it's, uh, it's very humbling to see that many people be on your side and have your back when you go to the racetrack. Every do you still week. try to pick up a wrench or are they like, get out of here? This so, is what we do. I, <laughs> I always, always try to. There's only, you know, once you get to that point, my expertise is the driving part, not the work on it. And you mentioned uh, the, uh, the, the engineers that are walking around. When you first came into the sport, uh, were the engineers already in place or were you back at the, at the grassroots level where you actually, as Jackie mentioned, had to pick up the wrench? Yeah, so for me, it was always picking up wrenches and, and being just a hands on guy. And at the levels I was trying to come from, the engineering was wasn't as big of a deal but when, when you get put in that situation it's unbelievable to see how much that is what our sport is turning into and you got to really trust those guys and believe them because at the end of the day they're going to be the difference maker of how much speed you're going to have that weekend and it, it allows you to you got to get in those guys and be on a first-hand basis and know that you get everything out of them that they expect to get out of you. What's one of the things that people might not realize is really important that the engineers tell you to do that has worked? for you? Uh, I think forever drivers are always real headstrong about how they're approaching race weekends and what they're doing physically with gas pedal and, and steering inputs and they have simulation now that ultimately runs a lap just as fast as we're going to run if you do it a certain way. So it's them actually critiquing the driver like well you're an engineer you don't tell me how to drive but there's a lot of things they can do through simulation to help our style of driving and, and make speed on the racetrack. Unbelievable. So they can they can adapt to, to what your style That's is. exactly right. And get the car to do what you do, what you want to do. 100%. How amazing is that? Uh, it's amazing yeah. what they can do with technology, and obviously you're hooked up with some of the best. Uh, but you're going to be in an assembly line of volunteers today with Meals at the Heartland. That's one of the reasons you're in town. Uh, any strategy or competitive going into making sure you can bag the most meals uh, yeah. for the needy here today? Yeah, I, I think everything's a competition. So, they told me. <laughs> so who are you going to be racing? Are you going to be racing Edward? The I'm, I'm the game? racing everybody. Okay. Who, who it is? Yeah, I'm, I'm due for a win, so uh, <laughs> hopefully I can get the first second one today. place last week, so you don't want to finish second this time, right? That's I love exactly it. right. All right. So, so 25,000, that, that's the goal. That's and incredible. Now, do people still have a chance to come out and, and give a hand, too? Yeah, from my understanding, you can go and uh, get a hold of Iowa Speedway. I think you can register and still be a volunteer. Perfect. Just go online, go to iowaspeedway.com. They have the information there. And, exactly right. Uh, you can uh, link up and get on over there. It's, folks, uh, we're talking about 22 miles away from the east side of Des Moines to get over to Iowa Speedway, and it's going to be right there uh, at the Newton Club, right? Exactly right. We'll be there. Okay. Packing stuff up. Oh, I love feed, it. Feed right. I want to take a look at some video here uh, real quick before we let you go here uh, of Iowa Speedway with you in action uh, because uh, you, you did really well. You do really well here at Iowa Speedway. And you mentioned the fact that you can drive just about anywhere on the racetrack. And does that is that what really gets you excited about coming back? Because you know that it doesn't matter where I run, I'm going to run well. That's exactly right. It doesn't, if your car is not handling one place, you go find clean pavement somewhere else. And that's what. That's the joy of this place, and uh, I think the last time we were here, we saw a guy start in the back and drive all the way to second, and we fell to the back at one point and was able to navigate from the top lane to the bottom lane, and that's what makes racing what it is, Iowa, and that's you always hear the fans rave about it as being one of the best shows of the weekend across the world in, in all forms of motorsports. So it's cool to be a part of all that. Yeah, another children's car you see there uh, running out front there. But um, what about the, the age of the pavement? That's something that people talk about all the time, how, how old the track is getting and how it, how it changes and the characteristics change. Do you like an older track or do you like a newer track? Yeah, I'm definitely more the, the older track guy, or, you know, style guy. It's, it's, uh, every year we go back, it gets more and more slick. And as that happens, the bumps get a little, little more rough. I hear you have pretty harsh winters up here. <laughs> and, and, and I know the summers are hot, and uh, all that stuff takes a toll on the pavement. It makes it it makes that racing that much better. Uh, your car may be good at lap five; it's probably not going to be very good at lap thirty. But you got to remember that nobody else's is either. So you have to make sure you can adapt and change what you're doing to keep up with the racetrack. And an older surface allows you to do that. Are you hoping for a hot day or a cool day? I like hotter the better. The hotter the better. Hotter the better. I wouldn't have guessed Heard that. You know, it, it's going to get at 145 degrees inside that cockpit at least. That's exactly right. I think we were here. That's what the temperatures we saw. The following week at Chicago, we saw 155, and then the thermometer wow. actually quit working. So, um, yeah, we come back here. We expect the temperatures and the humidity to be up, but that makes for a good race. There you okay. go. All right, but uh, most important reason you are here, talk about the race, of course, but the thing that's going on a little later on this morning, and it's only a two-hour window, right? That's exactly right. Okay, from, from 10 until noon today. That's because these guys are fast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. Get in it'll, and get it done. It'll be like a pit stop creating all these meals on 25,000 yeah. meals from the heartland. Thank is you be so much for doing that. No, absolutely. Being created today. I'm very humbled to do it, that's for sure. Wonderful. Well, good luck to you, man. Appreciate it, Take buddy. it easy. Yes, your your next race is where? Next race? Yep. It is New Hampshire this weekend. New Look Hampshire. Look forward to it. All right. All right. Good luck. That Thank it, you. That works. All right. It is nine minutes before eight o'clock, and we will be right back. This is CWI Live.